but we're all waiting to fall. Right we're all waiting for the blessed hope. During this time in life, uh, things are getting more painful in the world. We can see all those signs happening. And uh, so that song of Midnight Cry, it brings it to our hearts what we're all waiting for, that one day we're going to be released uh, from the pain of the world and all the things up. Let's be with our, uh, and keep in prayer, our Haitian people, the world will soon uh, forget it. Won't be hearing about it too much anymore. And yet people are still suffering. Let us not forget. Let us keep it in prayer, whatever we can do to help financially, send things over to the nation to relieve the burden. The people, we are our brother's keeper. That's what the Lord has said. I got a question for you to start out today's sermon. We hear a lot of sermons. And I uh, actually heard this on, on the radio from one preacher. Uh, he, has, uh, he was talking about it, but I'll ask it in the form of a question. What is the most important part of any sermon? Now, I, didn't, I wouldn't have known the answer unless I heard it, so if you can't answer it, but can somebody uh, take, a, take a crack at it? The most important thing of any sermon, what do you think? Prayer. Prayer. That's a good guess, brother. Thank you for uh, taking a shot at it. Uh, he was saying the most important part of any sermon are its hearers. That touched my heart. You know. I can think of many times uh, you know, the sermon was preached, and if you asked me a couple of days later, well, what was the sermon? No, I forgot. <laughs> And that's true, most of us, when we come to church, do we come to church uh, prepared? And he was talking about the great, uh, uh, the great awakening period where they, uh, they had all those great preachers. It wasn't great preachers. What made it great was that there was a waking within the people who came to hear them. And that's what made it great. It wasn't the speakers so much. I mean, they got the, oh, great preachers, Spurgeon, and all these worlds we know that they all got, you know, the credit for it. But it was really what the Holy Spirit was doing amongst the people. You know, as they were talking about that, I got to thinking, I says, uh, three weeks ago, Brother Dave Burkett uh, preached. And he preached, he was preaching about, uh, anybody tell me what Dave preached about? It's okay, it was just... Uh, repentance. Repentance. Like always. Right? <laughs> That's right, if you listen to Brother Dave, you know, he had, he brings home one solid message, and I believe that the reason he does that is because that's the message that God uh, has given him to say. Brother uh, Steve preached the next week. Does anybody remember what Brother Steve preached about? I remember that one. I remember. Brother Steve preached about love, and he preached about love in the, in the, in the framework of it being uh, it's, that it should be our motivation. Everything that we do should be motivated by love. And then Pastor Bob preached the next week. And Pastor Bob preached about, and he was here talking about the word, what should be motivating us as well. And he talked about being victorious. And I wonder how often that, you know, the people who come to hear the sermons, uh, we, we sometimes come as passive listeners. But where we really should be coming as, as intently trying to find out what can make me a better Christian? What can I take from this sermon that I can go back and I can dwell upon this during the course of the week? And that's what was impressed about, upon me uh, for that. Uh, what I'm preaching about this morning is uh, the subject is walking in the Spirit. The other day preached about... Uh, uh, how we need to uh, be in repentance and we need to obey God. Uh, we need to repent, we need to obey God. Brother St uh, Steve uh, preached to us about um, how love should be our motivation and 
and everything we do. Brother Pat, uh, Pastor Wall preached about being victorious and uh, our motivation should be victorious on all these things. And uh, one of the questions came up to me is, is application. You know, it's the first time that I'll be able to explain this. I think I've always known it, but it's the first time I think I'll be able to explain it, is that when we hear the Word of God, sometimes it's coming from a, a, a point of view from the Word of God, and we really have to think about, we have we really have to ask ourselves, you know, what is the application? Where, are that, where is that sermon coming from? Uh, my application this morning is, you know, all those things were great, that they, they preached about and I got some really great things out of what they were talking about but the question that came to me is how do we accomplish these things how do we repent how do we uh, obey how do we love and there's only one way to do this and uh, as Christ said as Jesus said when he was down on earth he said that I should not leave you as orphans but I shall send you a comforter to be come alongside you. Just as uh, the, the disciples had Jesus as their mentor and they got to walk with him and they got to hear him speak and they got to hear uh, what he would, uh, was saying, we have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can tell us and comes alongside us uh, to tell us things. Uh, one thing. I just want to read those verses again that was read. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said with a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whosoever believes in me, as the scriptures has said, streams of living water will flow from within. By this he meant the Spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus <coughs> had not been glorified. Now I'd like to read its sister verse, which is in John chapter 4, which is 12 through 14. Are you greater than our father Jacob? This is the woman at the well asking the question. Who gave us the well and drank from it himself? as did also his sons and his flock of herds. Jesus answered, Anyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up unto eternal life. That said to me, uh, those verses are actually about receiving Jesus Christ as your living Savior. When that happens, uh, uh, immediately we are giving a gift, and that gift is the Holy Spirit. It comes inside of us, and uh, if you think about it, the God of the universe, we have the God of the universe living within each of us who have been born again. Without this occurrence, then we cannot know God's mind, we cannot go know God's word, we cannot do nothing. Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. And so when we receive Christ, we, uh, we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive Jesus, and we receive the Father as well. We, we receive the Trinity of God within our hearts and our minds. So uh, when we walk with God, uh, one thing must happen. So this scripture says here, and uh, I don't know, some people say, well, you know, when you become born again, um, nothing may happen. You know, you, you, won't, you won't feel anything different. You know, you just accept it as fact. But that hasn't been my experience, and I don't uh, say if that's your experience, then, then it's wrong. But what I'm saying is, uh, in order to really be victorious, and in order to really obey God's word, in order to really uh, love uh, the way God does, then you must have some sort of an experience with God the creation on a personal level. That we come in and we can actually uh, hear God direct us, guide us, and, and send us into uh, uh, places of uh, gifting, 
uh, what we need to be doing will work, what ministry we, uh, he wants us to start. All along, uh, the Lord God, what we should be giving up, what we should not be doing. The Holy Spirit is very powerful, and he is in us, but he's so, he, he's so delicate that he can...